So we're actually really thrilled to have you as the first person that we're speaking to because uh, a lot of your work is either directly or indirectly looking at the concept of story mm-hmm. or looking at stories, the practice of stories. Mm-hmm. And in your book, the, uh, I should, I've completely spaced the name, The World is Made of Stories, right? The mm-hmm. mm-hmm. World is Made of Stories. After, at the very end of your first chapter, you pull on Thomas Berry. And of course, Thomas Berry, you know, famously kind of coined the idea of new story. And he was all about the importance of story and that, you know, we're kind of in trouble because we don't have a story. And he kind of like your work, he goes back to the Popple Reformation of 1100 and, you know, looks at the rise of the Western story, which becomes the global story, now sees that story in crisis and, uh, and really looks forward to the opportunity, you know, for a real true global story, you know, and drawing kind of on the cosmological level of the history of the universe, blah, blah, blah. You do something different. And I guess you've got the twinkle in your eye. So uh, you say, you quote him, you say, we are between stories, Thomas Berry. And then I can see the twinkle in your eye here. I don't know if it comes out in Kindle very well. And then you add a dot, 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 perhaps not a bad place to be. Mm-hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about why it's not a bad thing to be in between stories? Mm. Mm. S- When I think about, uh, say, spiritual practice, something like Buddhism, uh, the spiritual path, I mean, one way to articulate that is that it basically involves two supplementary processes, deconstruction and reconstruction. So deconstruction of the sense of self, that's something that help, that happens, say, primarily in meditation, Right. If the sense of self is composed of mostly habitual ways of thinking and feeling and acting, including identification with certain stories about who we are, what the world is, what's important in the world, how to live in the world, that kind of thing. So we come to practice with a story or with a cluster of overlapping stories. And it's really important in our practice, therefore, to let those go. And that's really what the meditation is about, right? When we're letting go of concepts, it's not just concepts, but concepts are function, you know, th- they're all interconnected. They're, they're parts of stories. Uh, so the other side of that is the, the reconstruction. So it's not simply about uh, deconstructing, for example, the sense of separation, but it's also reconstructing how we understand ourselves and where we are in the world. So it's, it's a double process, and one doesn't work very well without the other in the sense that, as I say somewhere in the book, the, the, it's not about getting rid of stories altogether, although that's certainly one way to understand some of the stuff, especially in Zen, but it's rather much more important to understand how storying works, because the truth is we need a story. At the same time, we need a story where we're not sort of stuck in a way that this is the only way that we can see the world. So the point of being between stories is that ability to have a story, but also not be so completely identified with it that we think it's the only possible truth and it's the only way to live in the world. So uh, in, in that sense, I, in that sense, I think it's always important to be between stories, which is another way of trying to articulate the same kind of thing. Now, I, I hope that makes some sense to you there. Pete, do you mind if I just do one follow-up and then I'll, and I'll back off a little bit here? But, uh, I kind of had this idea, like we'd start in the huge social and then bring it down, but uh, mm-hmm, yeah. it, it turns out the world uh, doesn't always go to my plans. I don't, I don't know if anyone else Well, actually, that. that's the other thing that I wouldn't <laughs> mind saying about sure. it. You know, the word, the operative word there is we, right? Mm-hmm. Now, we can understand we as a bunch of Zen students, which in a way is what I just did, but we can also understand we as our now global civilization, as our now global culture. And it's, I think it's pretty clear with it's overly clear with the ecological crisis, with the pandemic, with the kind of incompetent 
political systems and corrupt exploitive economic systems. It's, it's getting pretty clear and clearer that the, the stories that have been operative, that we've been living, that we've been taking for granted, those stories aren't functioning anymore. anymore. And so now we've got to let them go. And it's kind of exciting, actually, because I doubt we'll have a better opportunity than we have right now in terms of coming out of the pandemic to maybe come to a new story and, and, and on the basis of that new story, create or reform institutions that will provide a better story. So that was part that you did two thirds where I was hoping to go with that. And maybe just the last part that I was hoping just to kind of give us a foundation hmm. that uh, in, in that same book, you play with the uh, mythological idea, it's turtles all the way down. And then you talk about it, stories all the way down. Can you just flesh out a little bit, you know, both on the, on the collective and the global, you know, whatever level you like, as well as the personal level, what do you mean by it, stories all the way down? Well, how do we understand who we are? How do we understand what the world is? And basically what it comes down to is stories, Right. Uh, some of those stories we identify with as reality, and we don't realize that they're stories, right? Uh, some, some of the stories, you know, like fairy tales or something, maybe we see through them. Santa Claus, uh, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy at a, at a certain point. But a lot of the stories are simply things that in the process of growing up, we identify with because the, all the people around us identify with them. And therefore it's just how we understand what it means to be a person and what the world is really about. So the challenge therefore is to disidentify from those stories, especially destructive ones. I mean, for something like Buddhism, this, the central concept is dukkha suffering in the broadest possible sense. And the fundamental issue is a lot of the stories that we identify with and take for granted that we are living to some degree, they are stories that cause dukkha, either our own individual dukkha and or dukkha for lots of other people. And so one way to understand the challenge for us today is to transform our stories. Right? I remember Joanna Macy talking about the eco sattva path. She distinguished three aspects, right? One is defending what's left, Number two, creating the new structures, the new institutions, a bit like the old wobblies, creating the new in the shell of the old. But thirdly, in effect, we need new stories, new understandings of who we are, what the world is, what's possible. And we need all three of those today, very clearly. And in a way, you know, without the third, the other two just won't work because we're going to fall back into the same problems. <laughs> 